Okay. We have we have we have sucked the living life out of Major League Fishing. <laughs> the life out of it, huh? Yeah. However, Major League Fishing is coming to Lake Toho in the Kissimmee chain of lakes January 29th through February 3rd. They're going to a final lake the the last day. So, they're going to what? They're the they're going to have the first 4 or 5 days on Lake Toho. Okay. And a couple other they can they can go out to a couple other places. Oh, they're on the <laughs> chain, right? So they get the down chain. to Kissimmee and all that, right? Yep. The, okay. the final day, when mm-hmm. they have just 10 anglers, they're going to go to a different body of water. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. FLW comes into town. They completely... Yeah, switch. Yeah. They completely leave that yeah. Kissimmee chain, and they're going to go find something else? Yeah. Lake Underhill. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. It's like God, <laughs> And just circling it. Everybody <laughs> on the bridges yeah. is watching. I don't know where their final day is yet. They haven't announced it. But... I think that uh, being on the Kissimmee ch- Lane ch- Chain Lakes could be absolutely unbelievable in the end of January. Could be. Now we've always had we've always had this whole thing of we're so used there's to. A, there's usually always an open. Yes. Right? That all the guys come down and they, yeah. that's the first tournament they all fire up about. And well, the first tournament technically is in j- the beginning of January for FLW on Rayburn. So that's the first one. But then FLW's second tournament is on the Kissimmee chain, like February 5th or whatever it is. Right. Whatever the, the, that, that next weekend is. But I was what I was getting to is being on the Kissimmee chain on that time of year is going to be prime time for spawning fish. Mm-hmm. In the past, we've always, we're used to these tournaments that you catch the five biggest bass and you bring those five fish in. That's not how Major League Fishing does. No. They're going to get seven and a half hours, and it's as many fish as you can catch. So here's my first question. So they to, got they got guys already signed up to be the guys that are counting the, the refs or whatever? Yeah, they have it. Do they get that minute? Do they get that two minutes if it yes, hits the deck as they, well? They, I don't know. If, well, I, On I the don't Pro know, Tour? I don't know if the Pro Tour has that. That's it. I don't know. I'm asking. That's. I haven't asked that question. I haven't looked. I, I, I know they have I would seven imagine and a half. they don't. It can't be. I mean, it's yeah. just... It's too hard. To They're going to have the live scoring stuff. They're going to use the same right. s- technical stuff that the Major League Fishing has Not done every in the past. boat's going to have a camera, I would assume. No, but uh, I think they're going to have 10 camera boats for people with cameras on them. Mm. They're going to have it, it. It will be live fishing at its best, uh, and they can jump from boat to boat. But here's my question. We're so used to seeing five big fish got, get weighed in. Would your strategy be to go after giant fish? On Toho at that time of year, or would you rather go after a number of fish and try to just catch numbers? What do you think the strategy will be for some of these guys? I'll ask you first, Mike. What do you think they'll do? What makes the most sense? Because really, at that time of year, you could catch quite a few two, three pound fish. I think they're just going to play it by ear and see what they find and what they come across. I mean, they're going to they're going to mix the bag if they're fishing. You know the right spots, right areas. They're gonna catch some big fish in there, because and you, small ones as well. But on Toho at that time of the year, you could catch five fish if, in the leets, and it could you could have a, I mean, you could have a thirty pound bag without any problem. In the first day of the of the major league fishing, I think you might have a fifty pound day. Easily, well, I mean, you could with those schools of fish. fish. Exactly, those yeah. fish start to school up and. You know, would you go after the, the schoolers, small. the two pound, two and a half pound schoolers? Or do you, go, your morning you go flipping for big bass, or if you're de- if you're behind, do you switch up and then go after just big fish? I mean, we're so used to seeing five giant fish, f- five of their the, their five biggest fish come in that the new sh- this new major league fishing adds a whole new way of how anglers should sh- should should fish do they fish for numbers do they fish for big i mean because really you catch five so or six the first big day fish. does anybody get eliminated or is it two days and then elimination so they'll have they'll there'll be 40 boats going out on day one right there'll be 40 boats another the different 40 boats going out on day two then the first wow the, the people the then they'll have four, the first 40 boats go on day three and then the second day will go on on day four so it'll be back so they're swapping they're swapping but those 40 boats go out Twice, so then, then until they, they get eliminated. Till then they then they cut it down to 
like 20 from each, and then they'll break that down to the top 10. There'll be five or six days of fishing. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, Supposedly. I think you're going to have to look for big fish, man. I mean, hopefully you got an area you think, you know, a big patch or something, a new, you know, an area that's, a, you know, a football field of hydrilla or Kissimmee grass or whatever. And they, yeah. Hammer gonna... said, Boyd said all penalties will still apply. Oh, wow. Well. But where? W- w- what would be your strategy? Really, in all honesty, what would be your strategy? Would you go after just big fish or would you go after numbers of fish? If I found an area that had big fish, I'd go hit big fish first. Because day two, you, those got, somebody else might be on those fish and hammer that. And that's the end of your bite. And yep. you're going, you know, small fish and counts and get that, bo- you know, keep getting those bonus numbers up. Boudreaux, I know this is a tough question because no, this has to do with fishing. <laughs> Boudreaux, what would you do? I think this, I'd pro- uh, this is going to be worthwhile. No, I think I'd probably go on big fish until at least the first day trying to see where where I stand starting second second day. And then you can adjust your tactic based on what everybody else is doing, and what you, where you've scored in practice. There's no bass tracker, is there? Yeah, like, there is. There is as well. So you'll be able to see the you'll second be able to day. see. No, you'll be able to see it live as the day is going on. But the other anglers will be able to see where yes. the first guy, the first forty are catching is, fish at. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that even makes it worse. I don't know if I go if after you, big if fish. If I see Steve Chapman catching a bunch of big fish, and what I'm using. Yeah, because you can see it live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know you're down by the monkey box or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. I don't know if I'd I go know. after... I can go down there and, and hammer them, and then... Yeah. You know? I, I don't know if I'd go after big fish. I really don't know. I think at that point in time of the mo- year, I think I'd get out there and just try to put something on that I know I could catch fish after fish after fish, and just try to bring in 30, 40, 50 pounds of just two and three pound fish. What makes it even funnier, or not but even funnier? Here's the thing: Can you go and catch those big fish, pop a handful early, and then yeah, and then and then go after big fish early, and then go small then fish, whack thirty, forty yeah, fish. Yeah. You could, you, you know, do whatever afternoon. you want, or you want to know what? Matt, you remember the year we did the uh, the UCF tournament? Yeah, and uh, Hunter and what is his name? Kyle. Kyle had that spot. That they said they brought in their five big fish and they were thirty pounds. They were thirteen pounds over second place. I was in second place. Right. But they said they were at that place and they've probably caught seventy five pounds of fish that day. Every they they wore them out. Right, but that's the thing. You can find an area that will have small fish and those big fish in there. Yeah. So you're not only you're just going to be constantly catching. So is it is it out of line to think that there could, there could be someone that would. Uh, that could bring in 50 pounds of fish on the first day? Could that po- be a possibility? Easy. Oh, for sure. Easily. Yeah, I would think. Could we go 60, 70? Who knows, it man? It just depends. I mean, if you go out and the catch... The sky's it, the it, limits, man. I mean, if you get out there and catch five... I mean, we know that you can catch five, six, seven-pound fish out there mm-hmm. easily. And br- you could have five, five, six big fish at 35 pounds... And then just go after some small exactly. ones, those little a bazillion males. Bazillion two pounders. Yes. Yeah. You catch another twenty two pounders, you're looking at seventy five pounds right there. Just depends on how quick you're catching them. It really is. Uh, it's been intriguing and and in and interesting to hear about all this stuff as is. And with the 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 anglers that are in Major League Fishing, the Bass Pro Tour, it's even better. The first tournament being here in Kissimmee is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I was actually talking to one of the pros the other day. Strategy's going to... About it. You're going to have to pay attention not only to what you're catching... What everyone else is catching. What everybody else is catching. And and where. What the trend is. And then you're going to have to adjust what you're doing to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. You know, it, it could be a lot of fun. It could be. It, They're uh, excited, man. I yeah. mean, the guys, you know, yeah. I talked to one guy, I mean, you know, just the you know, angler of the year guy. But Oh, yeah. is he excited yeah, about he's it? he's excited. He's excited. Got his new boat. He's all he's all fired up. Did you so, get him set up with Tackle Web <laughs> since he couldn't find out where to get him? Yeah. <laughs> just got, to figure him it out. Up. <laughs> I have him set up. So. I know that this, this past week, 
the elites all got together in Nashville or Knoxville or wherever they were they got together and they had a big strategy the on Bass what, Master Elite the Bassmaster Elite guys. And for the first time in years, the Bass the Bassmaster Elite paid for all of their expenses too. Because they're so worried about what Major League Fishing is going to be doing. And we haven't even started. We have a break we got to hit here in a second. I still want to talk about this Major League Fishing because I think they've announced two places. And, and I honestly believe someone is listening to my inner thoughts about bass fishing tournaments. Something I've, I've said we on already, this show. We already we already took one out, one op- one one place out, right? We, we figured that's not going to happen this week, right? I don't for the, know. For the last championship day? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Well, yeah. No, no, no. I'm going to talk about the where they're going in the second day. Oh. I mean the second tournament. Oh, the second tournament. And I'd like to talk a little bit. I want to try to find out who where they're going for the championship here in, in Central Florida. Yeah. I mean, in the last day. They could go to Harris. They could go to Harris. Harris they, Butler. Butler would be wonderful. That one in Claremont, whatever that. that, that uh, John's Lake. John's Lake we over there. Take boats. We should have callers tell us where they think it'll be. Okay, we can do it. We have something we can give away. We can give away, give away yeah. a rod or something. Yeah. Yeah. I got plenty of crap at the house I can give away. Sure. <laughs> I can have a whole bunch of my crap. Okay, when we get back from the break, we'll talk more fishing. Uh, we'll hit a break here. This is Fishing Florida Radio presented by Yamaha. <laughs> Okay, we were talking about <laughs> Major League Fishing is coming to uh, the Kissimmee chain at the end of the month. And, and it's very exciting for us here. It's a great opportunity to see the first tournament. There'll probably be some some bugs, I would imagine. They're going to hopefully not. They won't be. They've they've hired a lot of people to, to do all sorts of work. Um, they've even taken some people from the elites that uh, you're like, why did that guy leave? Why did this no. guy? But that's, the, the, you want to? better opportunity they they take it so so this is all going to be streamed on their website yeah they'll be they'll be live fishing for four or five or six days in a row on majorleaguefishing.com and is Which, it the full day or is it just the i think they're doing i think they're doing full days really i think not so. like bass live where they do like yeah, just like the morning mornings. or whatever well you know bass live actually do a morning shift and then they take a lunch break and then they do an afternoon and sure, then they lunch. have then then they do uh the yeah. the weigh-in live weigh-in so I think uh, Major League Fishing, they, they have a good opportunity, but it, it like for for here in Kissimmee, do you go after the big ones? Do you go after the small ones? It's uh, something that we're going to see, uh, see what whose strategy is is what. I mean, I think some guys will probably go, I think some guys like Bobby Lane will go after just big fish. He knows where these fish live. I think people like J.T. Kinney, who's done really well over on the, Harris, on the Kissimmee chain, Who's an FLW guy? I think he'll. He's not fishing anymore, is it? He's a, he, he's not a commentator. I thought he was fishing. Is he? Yep, I believe so. Oh, I thought they he, moved him up. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some or, but uh, either way, Rojas. Any of these guys, Rojas. I had, think you're just gonna look for yeah. for areas of fish, man, and just go and whack them. Yeah. Now so, the question is, can you dial them in all day? Yeah. Can you say, all right? I mean, I don't know how much pre-fishing can you do, but can you say, all right, this is where I need to go in the morning. I don't think that there's... These, these fish are going to come start biting in, you know, the next window. The next window moves here. The next window moves there. I don't think there's any pre-fishing. So. But the the, the lake will be beat up. 80 of the best anglers will be yeah. out there, and then FLW will come in, and it's going to be... I think it will make FLW a little bit tougher. But... That's that's just part of it. There's tournaments out there all the time, so that's that's it. Now they it's come a to lot Ki- of water, a lot of fish. Yeah, there's there's a lot of fish. Now they go from Kissimmee to quite arguably a whole different way of fishing, but I actually think it'll be a better fishery than what we have. And they go from Kissimmee Chain to La- to Texas to Lake Conroe. Hmm. So if you look at the first two areas that fa- that the Major League Fishing has decided. They've put it down that we're going to go to the best places in the country to fish. Lake Conroe is way up there. Now, Lake Conroe is all four to five pound fish. But numbers. Numbers yeah. is astronomical. 
I remember talking to Keith Combs, even though Keith Combs is with the elites. Keith Combs, there were times he were he was catching 60 fish a day. Imagine catching 60 fish a day and you're at average of three, three and a half pounds. You got a 200 pound bag. <laughs> I mean, is it possible to have a 100 pound bag in a day? Oh, yeah, sure. Who, see, why who, not? who could be the first person in the in the major league fishing to do that? Would it not be awesome if it was KVD? I think it'd be in here in, in Kissimmee could probably happen. So who in, you think Rojas could pull pull off a, a hundred pound bag? You think Bobby Lane and Chris Lane couldn't do it on the the chain? Is it possible? I think all those guys can it's do it. Possible, but I, well, I think there's a, a certain amount of people that there's there's probably twenty five of the best anglers in the world on the Bass Pro, and then there's a bunch of guys that are great anglers, but just kind of just you know making a really good living. Some of them aren't, but majority are. I, mean, I think it's whoever dials these fish in for the longest window. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the guys that can stay on fish throughout that day of fishing, constantly catching and moving and getting in front of that, you know, wherever that bite is, as soon as they feel like it's fall- tapering wherever they're at, get over to the next spot. How far is that run? Yep. You know, how quickly can they get to those fish and find those fish, locate them and get them to start biting? And I think it's going to be a great time. I think it's going to... Uh, definitely adds a little different angle for sure yeah it, it adds a humongous angle to it and you know it's still the best anglers of, of it's still some of the best anglers on the planet i'm not taking away any, anything from flw because quite honestly i think john cox is one of the best anglers on the planet no doubt um and you know, scott martin isn't bad at all either and there's a there's a there's three or four guys on flw that are studs there's two or three guys on the elites that are studs too oh yeah oh it's yeah. quite a few man yeah i mean so I think it. I think they're coming out with a. They're coming out swinging, is what I think. And I think that having it at Kissimmee for the the first one is amazing. I think going to Conroe for their second one is even better, because I think they're going to catch an insane amount of fish, and someone's going to be way up there. Hmm. And it is you know where where you know the first tournament for I don't even know where the first tournament. I think St. John's is the first tournament for the elites. At the end of uh, yeah, they're coming back, right? Yeah, so it's you know it's going to be a lot of fun to see what's going on, and I think it's I think what Major League Fishing right now is doing is the right thing. I think going to these places where you can catch numbers and big fish at the right time is a great way to start off how they do, and that's how I've always liked watching bass fishing. Right. I want to see a let lot the, of fish. Let the big fishery fish. drive the tournament, yes. not, yeah. not the numbers and the money. Yes. That seems to be what, what was always dictating the whole aspect of where they went and this and that. Yes. It wasn't necessarily where's the best bite, where you're going to get the the best showing, I guess, yes. or the best you know production out of it. It was more, you know, what town, what city, what yeah. county. Who's paying able, the most money? Able to host us and put us up, give us the best deal to yeah. get our tournament there. And, uh. Yeah, I I think this I think like I said I think what Major League Fishing is doing is is spot on right now. I mean they're starting this new tournament and everyone's everyone's wondering everything. How are they going to do this? How are they going to do that? And they're still very secretive on a lot of stuff. Right. Very secretive on a lot of stuff. Yeah. So it's cool to see and know that they're the people that are picking the lakes that they're going to are going. You want to know we should go here because we're going to catch our guys are going to catch a ton of fish. And you want to know what they're, they could catch giant ones and numbers. And that's the entertainment value. That is the I mean, that's what's going to get people to dial in, man. That, and you want to know what they're, the, they're putting The hampers bass fishing is, you know, it's, you know. It's it got to be, be entertaining. It's and, and yes. just sit there and, and they're catching no fish. No, yeah, there's so hours. So many times. There's hours when you go through the elites uh, stuff that it, there will be hours during the day where nothing is caught. It's just watching yeah. someone cast and reel in. Yeah, and they're getting hits, and a lot of these guys are shaking fish off before yes. you know they're never bringing them up because it wasn't. It's not worth it to them. Exactly. They're looking for a big fish, not a small fish. But now that every fish counts, you're gonna every fish that's uh, in that you know over twelve or over fourteen. And the beating on the tackle is gonna be impressive too. They're gonna yeah. have to be pl- changing out plastics left and right, or yeah. lures and rods and. It'll be interesting. It's I I can't wait to see what goes on. I was really hoping that they were gonna let. One of us, Marshall. Yeah, but that obviously went out the door. We'll get the roundabout and chase him around. Yeah, 
Let's I mean, go. Roundabout <laughs> boat, just chase them. They're not doing any martial stuff. They're not doing any media stuff. I mean, it's really... Now, I shouldn't say they're not doing all of it. Gary has told us we have... We can do whatever we want because we've talked about them so much and they appreciate all the stuff we've done. Okay. So we'll see if they live up to that. We'll see. I'm looking forward to going out there and checking things out before, after, and during. We definitely need to make a ride. Yeah. It's in our backyard. We need to, we we need to cover it from top friends. to bottom. Yeah, a lot of our friends. 